Will President Biden call for a permanent ceasefire in the Israel-Gaza war? Over 100,000 Democratic voters in Michigan voted uncommitted last week to communicate their opposition to the administration's policies toward Israel and Gaza. They had two main demands. First, that the administration call for an immediate permanent ceasefire. And second, that they completely stop sending any military aid to Israel, which would basically overhaul the U.S.-Israel relationship. Two days after that primary, Palestinians in northern Gaza, which is now on the brink of famine, clamored around trucks carrying humanitarian aid when the Israeli military opened fire. According to the Gaza Health Ministry, over 100 people were killed and 700 injured. Now, the IDF says that the majority of people were killed from being trampled on or run over by trucks, and that they fired warning shots and opened fire at Palestinians approaching their tanks in what they believe to be a, quote, threatening manner. Witnesses there, though, say Israeli troops opened fire as they all approached the trucks, and the director of a hospital that received wounded patients said the majority had gunshot wounds. The IDF has promised to conduct an investigation, but no matter how you look at it, what happened was unjustifiable. Even if what the Israeli government is saying is the complete truth, it's not what happens in war where one side is a democracy. Militaries under democracies are supposed to conduct themselves according to a set of values that guide the military in what or how or when to fire, which is why I couldn't find other similar examples in other wars where a democracy was fighting. Given the desperate situation, the U.S. airdropped meals into Gaza, which is good, but reflects just how frustrated the U.S. is with Israel since airdropping aid is the least efficient and most expensive way to do this. A couple days after this tragedy, Vice President Harris was in Selma, Alabama to mark the 59th anniversary of Bloody Sunday. And during her speech, she called for an immediate ceasefire. And the crowd cheered. And then she followed it up with, for the next six weeks. Girl, I would have said that sentence a bit faster. So many felt like it sounded like a shift in policy, but what she said is not different than what the administration has been saying for the last few weeks. It was just in a stronger, more demanding tone. Let's talk FOPO. The U.S. has been mediating negotiations that would include a temporary six-week ceasefire and a hostage prisoner swap. The way the U.S. sees it, a temporary ceasefire would allow more hostages to get out and a significant amount of humanitarian aid to get in. It would also give the U.S. time to build a longer-lasting permanent ceasefire by supporting negotiations to agree on who governs Gaza, who isn't Hamas. And that's the key. The U.S. wants to pursue a permanent ceasefire this way, rather than just calling for it outright, because if this plan were to work, it would lay the foundation for something more long term. Most critically, the U.S. does not want to call for an immediate permanent ceasefire now because it would mean Hamas would walk away with the hostages and still govern Gaza. And that is why the administration is not going to change its policy, because the U.S. government also has an interest in Hamas's defeat. Now, Hamas just rejected the latest ceasefire proposal, which is the second time they reject it, arguing that they want to see Israel leave Gaza entirely before any hostages are exchanged. I just expect the administration to go back to the drawing board to try and reach this temporary ceasefire as quickly as possible and preferably before Ramadan starts on March 10th.